Good morning, everyone. I mean, <laughs> good evening, everyone. I was just reading that some of our Australian friends are joining us tonight and they're saying good morning. So I was saying good morning back. So cheers, everyone. Happy Saturday. Well, it's Saturday here in the US. It's Sunday over in Australia. Welcome, everyone. So glad that you can tune in wherever in the world you are. Welcome to my craft room. My name is Susan Campfield and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I love to share uh, creative ideas and hopefully inspire you so that you can make and send beautiful and fun cards to your family and friends. You guys are the important one here. I just hopefully uh, inspire you to get creating, but you're the ones that can really make a difference by the beautiful hand made cards that you send. So thank you for all that you do. Um, I'm a messy crafter. I'll just put that right out there. <laughs> uh, and so we made a game of it. One of my viewers, Janelle, uh, Janine, who is now part of my team, um, made this a drinking game. So uh, most of us drink the non-alcoholic stuff, but whatever's in your cup is just fine. So let me know in the comments what's in your cup. I have my favorite delicious ice water in my cup this evening. Um, when I lose something and then when I find it again, we'll say found it and we'll all take a sip so that we can um, make something that can be annoying and frustrating a little more fun, right? <laughs> so welcome everyone. We're going to do a fun fold card tonight. I love fun folds. I love making cards, but um, doing a plain card folded in half, sometimes it gets a little bit boring. And so we like to change it up by doing some fun folds, which uh, can really be a wow factor for the person receiving the card. So we're, um, I got a whole bunch of birthday cards. My birthday was last month and I shared them with you and I had some requests uh, for some, um, uh, I lost my train of thought, um, to do some of the folds that we saw that some of my team members and friends and followers mailed to me. So we're going to do one of those tonight. I, I'll totally admit I was intimidated by this card. It is called the Corner Open Fun Fold Card. <laughs> and so it's a diagonal score and diagonal scores always scare me a little bit. I don't know why. I don't know why they just do. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to break it down. We're going to figure it out together and we're going to make a bunch of these cards. We're going to fall in love with it. I know we are. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Um, I'm going to just flip my camera and we'll get going. Oh gosh, I should show you the um, project sheet email is about to go out or I'm featuring the um, uh, bridge fold card. And I did one as a video and I've been having a lot of fun and making a few others so that I can add those to the tutorial. I'll show you those in a minute. But uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, where is that? There it is. <laughs> you can uh, subscribe to my free project sheets at suestampfield.com. Click on subscribe and you will be all set. If you have subscribed to the uh, project sheets and you're not getting them, I know that does happen sometimes. Sometimes it's on my mail provider's end. So if you send me an email, susan at susanfield.com, we'll get you sorted and get those creative ideas flowing for you again. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's flip the camera. Let's look at fun stuff. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that one's not working for me again. So we're gonna do it the other way. Yay. All right. Hopefully you can see this. And uh, let me go back to comments so I can see if you can see this. A shout out to my moderator, Jennifer Walsh, who's uh, joining us virtually tonight. Jennifer's in the comments. If you have a question, um, feel free to tag Jennifer with the uh, uh, at symbol and then type in the word Jennifer and uh, she can help us get things worked out, hopefully. So um, she'll, you know, shout out at me if I if I miss your comment and thanks for all you do Jennifer she also um shares the dimensions for us this one um yeah we're kind of winging it tonight so let's look at the card I got hmm, where is it oh <laughs> it's super messy in here you guys are you shocked yeah no not at all Susan of course it's messy in here it always is all right so this is the card I received it was from my team member uh Carol um Oh, Carol Garrison sent me this one. That's right. And so this is the corner that opens and then it folds out like that. Isn't that cute? 
What an adorable fold. So we're going to figure this one out. Um, Carol was inspired by um, another one of my team members, Rachel Tessman. Uh, Rachel did a video on this and you can find it on her blog. It was with the Abigail Rose paper. She did the whole base as designer series paper. And so if you search Rachel's uh, blog, which is stampyourartout.com, for the Abigail Rose Corner Open Fun Fold card, you'll you'll find hers that her that hers there. Oh my gosh, you guys can't talk tonight. Um, so uh, this is the card we're gonna make. We are gonna make it with cardstock, like Carol did. We're gonna use some different products. So right now, uh, we are all impatiently waiting for the last chance sale to start. Um, today is April first here in the United States. April Fools. Um, and uh, nature, Mother Nature uh, pulled the ultimate uh, Mother uh, <laughs> April Fool's Day uh, joke on us by um, getting a whole lot of snow uh, to dump on us last night. Like we got between eight to 10 inches. Um, I looking out the window at my lilacs and they're completely flattened and it looks like actually they split and broke. Um, so yeah, I might've lost some, <laughs> I might've lost some bushes last night, but you know what? They needed to be pruned anyway. So I guess, <laughs> Hopefully they'll still survive. Um, so yeah, we did a whole lot of shoveling. And of course, it's that really heavy, wet snow with a layer of ice um, underneath. So uh, I am sure it's ice water in my cup. Uh, however, I will tell you, I am super tired, Cindy, because we did a lot of shoveling today. And then I did a bunch of cleaning out of some closets and stuff. And then I walked for two miles with the dogs in the snow. I'm tired. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Um, so the last chance uh, sale starts on Tuesday. The um, make sure I tell you right, April fourth is when the sale starts. And oh my gosh, you guys, there are some amazing discounts. I don't know if you can see all of these discounts. So this beautiful um, PDF that's very easy to read was created by a demonstrator. Um, oops, got other things in here. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just grabbed it out of my printer. Uh, Deb Snyder uh, was the creator of this PDF. And it's so much easier to read than the small print one. This is a large print one. So I will be sending out this super fancy one um, in the project sheet email that should go out on Monday. So make sure you subscribe for that. And we'll also have in that email the bridge fold card tutorial. So this is the bridge fold card. It folds flat, fits in a standard envelope, stands for display, super cute, really easy and fun. This is the one we did in the video. And then um, these are the elegant border dies, which are available as part of the online exclusives. And so I've been playing <laughs> with those dies and um, the one of the papers that is retiring, it's called T Boutique, I believe. Um, in fact, we're going to use it tonight, uh, but this is another bridge fold card that I made and shared on my Instagram channel. And then I just couldn't stop you guys. Um, this is another one again with the T boutique. This one I did, you know what? I should have put uh, contrasting on the sides there. Oh, I should add that. I did do embossing on the front of this one as well, but this pattern is just so delicate. It works really well with these, um, elegant border dies. If you haven't picked those up, you can pick those up in the online exclusives. So uh, these um, these uh, cards will be going out in the project sheet email. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so tired. You're going to have to keep me on track tonight. This is going to be a, this could be a bumpy ride. All right. Woohoo. We can do it. We can totally do it. Jennifer's here to help. You guys are here to help me. We're going to figure it out. All right. So I'm gonna break down this card for you all. Um, so this is the fold that we're doing. And Rachel called it the corner open fun fold card. So I think she got it in a swap from uh, one of her team members. I'm thinking for ours, we might actually do a landscape version. I actually scored it the same way though first. <laughs> I scored it like this which is just like Carol's. And then I thought, hmm, I might want landscape. And so I just flipped the whole thing over. Uh, so that that's totally an option um, to do. We can even decide what you guys think if we should do that option or not. But you can see it's got this little, you know, we used to, when I was a kid <laughs> in middle school, we called it um, 
junior high school then, uh, we, we would pass notes that were kind of like this. So they were like quacker notes. Do you guys remember? Okay, I'm probably dating myself, but that's what it reminds me of, um, how these sides collapse in. So let's break it down together and we're going to figure it out. So we're going to start with a piece of good old basic white design, uh, not designer series paper, Susan, this is cardstock. Okay, did I mention I'm tired? All right, let me grab this. <laughs> you guys are so patient. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. So we're going to cut this at seven by eight and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it, uh, cut the seven inch part first. I'm going to pull out the arm on my trimmer here. Make sure I have it out all the way so I don't cut the wrong size. So this piece is going to be seven inches. And I'm going to use the cutting blade, which is over here. So I'm just using my paper trimmer for this. And then I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to go at, what did I say? Eight and a quarter. So seven by eight and a quarter. And now you could do this with designer series paper. Um, if you, I'll show you one I kind of was playing with. Uh, the trick is if your designer series paper is directional, um, that can be a little bit of an issue with this card. Now, I don't know why. I was going to score it with the scoring tool. Should we try it with this instead? Gosh, I guess we could. I guess we could. Um, <laughs> what could go wrong, right? <laughs> right, guys? All right, let's, let's do it. So again, I'm going to go landscape with this card. So I'm going to score it at two and three quarters right here. Open this up. Go two and three quarters. Uh oh, uh oh. I can tell this was not pressing down. It's writing on top. It started to come out. Uh, I don't know if you can see it's half popped out. So all I have to do is pop, go down to this one section of the track that's a little bit wider and pop it back in. That's the yeah, any outy section. So, okay, now where it looks like we're engaged, let's go back up to the top here two and three quarters inches and give that a score. So you found it. Yay. <laughs> All right. So we've got that scored quite well. And now we're going to score it again. Where am I at here? So we did this two and three quarter inch score. Now I'm going to rotate it and I want to score it at two and three quarters here, which would be off to the side. So I could flip it over and do it on the other side. Or I can just score it at four and a quarter. That would work too. Let's see here. I'll just, I'll, I think it'd be easier for you guys if I do it two and three quarters. So I'm just flipping it around. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, don't do that, you guys. Did, yeah, you saw what I did. Oh my gosh, Susan. Mm. Did I mention that I'm a little tired? Okay, let's start. <laughs> Let's start over. All right. Clearly, I need something stronger in my cup than water tonight. Goodness. All right. We we uh, messed it up, so we're gonna take we're gonna take a sip, guys. Mm. All right. So let's go to. Let's just try that. Do over. Do over. Okay. Maybe I should not be allowed a. What? Okay, now that time I did want to score. Oh my gosh, you guys, now I'm all flustered. Oh, deep breath, Susan, deep breath. Jennifer, can you just take over and you demonstrate? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Okay, we're back with our card base, which is <laughs> seven by eight and a quarter. And you saw how easy that was to cut. All right pull that down and I'm going to go back here and I want to score at two and three quarters here and two and three quarters in here but I'm going to use the scoring blade to score instead of the cutting blade because yeah guess what if you don't then it cuts all right so two and three quarters right here and then I want this square to be two and three quarters by two and three quarters with my score lines. So I'm going to flip it over and slide it here for two and three quarters. I'm thinking we're going to need a project sheet for this one, you guys. What do you think? <laughs> All right. So I've got it. 
so that let me fold it a little bit so you can see. Can you see how we've got the square um, in the corner? Ours is going to actually be turned this way because we're going to go landscape. All right, so I've got my square in the corner. And you can see the next part we want to do is this diagonal fold. And that's how these pop in. And it folds down like that. So to get that diagonal, we need to mark at five and a half and at five and a half, and then we need to connect those two lines. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do that. You can take a pencil. Ooh, I even have a pencil. And you could score. So I've got the edge lined up at five and a half, and I could just make a little line right there. Okay, no, I can't, not through my, my pencil's too fat to fit through my track. I could do that, and then I could mark at five and a half down here. Um, and then connect the two. Uh, you can also just make a little, um, like a little crease mark, not a cut mark, Susan. <laughs> uh, if you're not a fan of pencil marks and having to erase those, you can actually just make a little, a little mark with your um, scoring tool. So that's actually my preference usually because I, I don't know why I don't like to have to erase score, <laughs> score lines. So. Um, Maybe it's a personal, that's, maybe that's a personal issue, uh, but I can just mark it with a pencil this time. I'm sure I can handle that. So I'm going to do five and a half, which is right here. All right, so I've got those two marks, and I'm going to lay them in the track of my trimmer. And I am not going to use the cutting blade. I'm going to say that to myself again and again. <laughs> I'm going to score so that I'm connecting those two little marks, all right? I might have been a little off on that. Well, we'll see how we go. And I'll grab my eraser and just make those go bye-bye. Okay, all gone. All right, so let's recap here. So we've got a two and three quarter inch a score line there, and then a two and three quarter inch a score line that way. And now we have this diagonal. I'm gonna go ahead and crease with my bone folder on that diagonal. No, I'm not, I'm gonna drop it. <laughs> and that diagonal needs to actually be a, a valley. These are mountains and that one's a valley. So which way am I going here? Probably go valley, huh? There we go. And then just very gently bring the whole card in like that. And that forms that corner. And then I did find that I just want to kind of straighten it up with my hands. And you can see I've got, a, I don't know if you can see that. I've got kind of a little blob here, a little wrinkle. So I'm just going to take my bone folder and straighten it up how I want it and press down. And now you've got that um, that diagonal piece. Now I'm I actually want it on this side, so I'm gonna flip the whole thing over. Super easy. You just go inside. I'm gonna do an inside outy here and flip it over so that it's on the left. I don't know that it matters. It just seemed to me like this would be more the regular way you would open a card like that. Okay. All right, was that like super confusing? <laughs> there are no mistakes in art, just embellishment opportunities, right? Absolutely. Unless you cut into the score. And then, <laughs> then you got to save the paper for something else. Now, where am I going? Where am I going with this paper? I need some things. We have to decorate our pretty card now. So we're going to take some of this pretty tea boutique paper. Let me grab some out that I um, was looking at to decide what we want to make. This is just super cute paper. Look at this one. Wouldn't that be fun to put on the just on the flap of your envelope? It's got the little envelopes with the flowers. Um, super cute to put on the outside of your envelope. So fun. I got the little teapots. Nice and bright flowers. This one's really elegant and pretty. 
I'm flipping through here to see what we want to do. Some little teapots, some teacups with flowers coming out of them. And of course we have all the other sizes, sides too. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this. I might use this. This is a definite maybe. <laughs> and I'm going to use that. So, hmm, all right. And we might do some die cutting and I don't know. We're just going to, we're just going to start creating friends because that's the fun part, right? So I want to cut out a teapot here. I'm going to grab this uh, sweet sorbet one right here. So I'm going to cut it at one and a half inches. Look, I got a whole little row of teapots. Aren't those adorable? And I'm going to cut it again at one and a half inches. That's not one and a half, Susan. That's half. Oh, let's go this way because it's easier for me to measure. All right. So just cutting a little square that has our teapot in it. And let's cut a little polka dot square or two here. I'm jiggling my camera, sorry about that. So this paper is retiring and it's going to be on sale. Let me look at my cheat sheet. I believe it is going to be 30% off. And we have a color refresh coming. So the color refresh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look the other way. So I took the retired list and then I took my catalog and I marked everything that was um, leaving. And if it was on sale, it just helps. I'm a visual person and I needed to see the pictures of what, <laughs> what was leaving so I could decide what I needed to add to my stash. So yes, that paper is retiring. It's going to be 30% off starting on Tuesday. So, all right, here we go. So I have these, this square here that is two and three quarters by two and three quarters, if you remember our score lines. And this square is also the same size. So for my layering piece, I want to cut it at two and a half by two and a half. All right. And I haven't decided what the other squares are going to be yet. Uh oh, what did I? Okay, where did I? Where did I cut a little teapot? Oh my gosh, you guys saw me cut it. Oh, there it is. Found it. All right, let's take a sip, everyone. Cheers. I'm getting makeup on my cup. Oh well. So this is going to layer on here. And we can decide if, um, let me know in the comments if you think we should have a white border around that little um, teapot to kind of uh, just add another layer in there. Let me know uh, white layer or no white layer, or just put layer or no layer, and I'll know what you mean. So that can decorate one of our corners. I love this pattern. I don't know why. <laughs> I just absolutely love it. But this one's pretty, yeah, I think this is just going to be a little too much red for me. Yeah, let's do a square of this. It's going to bring that paper trimmer back in <clears throat> and cut it two and a half by two and a half. And two and a half by two and a half. There we go. Now there's a lot of pink and yellow in this paper too. So we can pull that into our card if we want. The back side of this, in fact, is this really cute. What is falling? Things are falling, you guys. <laughs> cute little uh, pink gingham. Uh, all right, why don't you just come right back in here? All right. Layer, layer, layer. Looks like the majority would like that white layer. So let's do that real quick. I just happened to... <laughs> I just happen to have some extra white cardstock because you know what? That happens when you cut it wrong. <laughs> See, I knew I'd use it. No worries, right? All right, so I'm going to go, well, let's go one and three quarter by one and three quarter for our layer so that we can still see lots of those fun polka dots because if I remember correctly, we cut our little teapot at one and a half by one and a half. All right. So that can go on there and that can go on the, <laughs> oh, 
How do I keep losing stuff, you guys? Seriously. Oh my gosh, because I put paper on it. <gasps> Found it. Oh my gosh. All right, we're going to take another sip. That's the kind of night we're going to be having here. Oh boy. All right, so we've got our little layered teapot there. Now you actually could layer that with a nice bright yellow behind there too. If you didn't want white, you could have a little pop of yellow. That would be super cute. Um, what is the yellow in this paper? When you get your Stampin' Up! paper, on the back you've got this card and it lists all of the colors that are in the paper um, as long as they match a Stampin' Up! paper. So if it's not listed, then it's probably an uh, in-between sort of color. Crush Curry is the, one, the yellow that is listed here. Crush Curry is a bit dark, so I would probably actually go with maybe Daffodil and just do a little bit uh, lighter pop. I'll show you the difference. This is daffodil, so I still think that would go quite nicely. Uh, but Crush Curry is a little bit more gold and a little bit darker. So, you know, you could go either way. But I think we're going to stick with the white for this one. But just know if you're not a fan of the white, that would be an option. And so I'm going to stick these down just as soon as I oh, found it. <laughs> Found my adhesive. I, it was where it belonged. Well, gosh, I'm not gonna look there. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Uh, you have this layout on a double-sided DSP too. Yes, and that makes a cute inside. Yeah, on Rachel's uh, blog post, she did it that way with um, designer series paper. And I do have one kind of started over here that I'll uh, show you what I've got in process, and then I'll uh, post the finished card somewhere you know I'm not okay I'm not 100% sure where we're gonna put stuff here this is kind of what I'm thinking oh gosh that's pretty dang cute you guys all right let's do it let's stick some stuff down so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here and right now I'm just using the tea boutique paper now I should tell you that this uh, comes with, or it coordinates with, that's the word I wanted, it coordinates with a really cute bundle, which I also have out here, which would be another option. I'm thinking we're going to use this on the inside. So the dies for the set, oh gosh, I left the teacup die over on the die cutting machine. That's okay, I can grab it. Um, the dies for this set come with the solid cup and the decorative cup and then um, some cute tags and different uh, lemon slice. Look how cute that is. So cute. Um, so you certainly could have the teacup on the front as well. I'm thinking we'll put the teacup actually on the inside and we might do another layer behind it here. So uh, because layers are fun. So I'm actually going to pop up my teacup here. That's my layered teacup. I'll grab my dimensionals. They're right where they belong. And I actually remember to look where they belong. Now I have, in the meantime, not put my regular adhesive back where it belongs. And then I set the dies on it. So this is how, this is how I lose things all the time. All right. So there we go. We've got a pretty darn cute start to our card and we can put some designer paper here. Um, I am thinking, uh, I'd love your input on this, but I'm thinking of going with the same pattern uh, down here so that these two kind of um, balance each other out. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so this piece is going to need to be, I don't know. Let's look at it. This is one and a half inches by two and three quarters. So I want to go a quarter inch less than that. So it's going to be one and a quarter by two and a half. One and a quarter by two and a half. Right there. So cute. I just love this paper. I really like uh, this other one too that's in this pack. Um, where'd it go? 
It's not this. Oh, here it is. This one. Found it. Take a drink, everyone. This pattern with the just the sprigs. It's so delicate and pretty with the um, the greens in it. Very spring-like, I guess. It is not spring-like here in Minnesota. <laughs> it is winter-like here, and uh, it's uh, time to, time for it to stop, friends. Really, it's time for it to stop. Okay, so there we have our card started. And then we can put a sentiment right here. So my thought for this card is to grab the cup of tea here. And I'm going to stamp the words, take care of yourself. Um, I'm going to send this to my sister. <laughs> my sister, who I recently was um, uh, down having a cabin adventure with, uh, ended up in the hospital today. Uh, with an unexpected surgery. She's doing well and uh, going to be headed home here as soon as they let her go. Um, ended up with a, a kidney stone. So uh, not fun. And uh, she is uh, needs to take care of herself, right? So I'm going to send her this little cup of tea card um, so that she can get better quick. All right, so we're going to put that right here, and I'm going to stamp that in Sweet Sorbet. That is the color that is here. In fact, the colors in this paper are all of the in colors that were introduced last year. So you've got your Orchid Oasis, your Summer, um, your um, Tahitian Tide, your Sweet Sorbet. Um, the Parakeet Party is in there as well, and the Starry Sky. So... I'm going to go to my pads here. Let's grab Sweet Sorbet. And we're going to stamp that in this lower corner here. With the photopolymer, I can tell if I'm straight or not. Yay, straight. <laughs> and then on the inside of the card, I think we should do our little teacup. But we might want to do something different. What do you think? I feel like I need a little pop of color. What if we cut the teacup out of the designer paper instead of doing this? Let me know your thoughts. Should we do the die cuts, uh, the cardstock? Mm, let's do red and white teacup or flower teacup. Let me know in the comments which one you think would best finish off our card. Um, if we did this one, we'll probably put a designer paper behind it. We could even do this and put that right over the top. That would be totally cute. Or we can die cut one of the flowers and see what we think. Maybe we won't like it, but when we can change our minds, right? So flowers, red and white, red and white, red and white. You like the die cut one. All right, it looks like the red and white is, is kind of squeaked out the win there. So let's go ahead and put it behind some designer series paper. I'm just gonna use the same one because I kind of like to have a little bit of what's happening on the front carry through on the inside. And again, this could have been on the outside instead of the teapot and you could have put the teapot on the inside, right? You could do either way. Um, Let's grab our paper trimmer here and we're going to cut this at two and a half by two and a half. The little cutie left over there. I'll have to use that for something, right? And two and a half. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and that can go right inside here. I don't know, is it directional? Not really, it can go any direction, I think. Oh, Lordy, all right. Oh, I just, I see it. Do you, can you see it? It's just poking out right there. <laughs> Found it. Stop trying to hide, you guys. All right, let's take another sip here. Get lipstick all over my cup. It is a really full, oh, Jennifer's got a question. Will this card stand up on its own? It will not stand up on its own, I don't think. Well, actually, holy cow, it does. <laughs> I guess because of this bend here, huh? I did not think so, but apparently I am wrong once again. So um, yes, it can stand up on its own. <laughs> I don't know if you get the full effect because it's kind of coming out a bit, but um, absolutely. Ah, who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk, right? 
I would have voted no on that and I would have been completely wrong, which happens a lot around here. So I need a scrap paper here. Now, I have to give a little shout out here to this grid paper. I absolutely love this, uh, this grid paper. I think it's seven inches by seven inches. It is in the catalog and it is retiring. And I am uh, needing to stock up on it. So don't buy it all. Save me a little bit. <laughs> because I absolutely love how, how it's pre-cut. It's small. It's easy for me to just grab and pop on my desk without having to trim anything down. And uh, you can reuse it multiple ways. It's got the grid on there. But you can also just uh, reuse it over and over again until it's no good. And then you can grab a new sheet. I am just dabbing. I did not put adhesive sheets on here. You certainly could. I am just dotting a little bit of uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. You could also take a sponge dauber and apply it that way. But I'm just doing little tiny baby dots of glue. All right. And then we'll go ahead and just flip that over and put that onto our cup. Now I have to say one of the cutest dyes in this, you're getting crooked Susan. I'm gonna put it back on my dark background so I can see where the edges are. That's a little bit better. Um, I have to say one of the cutest dyes in this set is the little uh, tag. There is a little, um, you know, like when you have a, a cup of tea, there's a little paper tag when it's a tea bag and not the tea leaves there's a little um, tag on it. So there we have our cup, our cuppa right there. I don't know. Not sure about that paper, you guys. It's a little too busy, isn't it? Hmm. All right, let's look at other options. We have this one. We have this one. Let's see. Take a look. There, I'm looking for ones that have red in them. This side is really busy. Let me go. Let me look at the back side. See if there's one. Actually, we could do yellow. Ooh, yellow might be fun. Hmm. It's bright and happy and cheerful. Cheer someone up that's not feeling. It's feeling under the weather, right? Well, let's see what else we could do. I'm thinking that's probably our best bet. Here's some stripes. That's cute too. Or there's this, oh my gosh, so many choices, right? Ooh, the blue's nice. Kind of like in the blue. All right, friends, <laughs> I cannot decide. You're going to have to help me out. So um, yeah, we're going to do another layer here. So yellow or blue, let me know which one you prefer. Yellow or blue. And then we have two yellow choices, but we will figure that out. Yeah, I think this one, I love this pattern, but it's just a little too busy on here. So um, I'm going to just pop it off and I'll use it on something else, right? I'm a dog trying to get into my stamp room. <laughs> yellow, 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 yellow. All right. So friends, do we want to go with yellow stripe or yellow solid? Stripe or solid, let me know in the comments. And let's put this one aside. And while you all are deciding on that, I'm thinking we need a little, a little tag on our, on our teacup here. Let me, cause that tag die is so stinking cute. Let me grab a scrap of uh, paper here and let me grab the little tag stamp. I don't know why I still have this. I'm throwing that away. I don't need that. It just keeps getting in my way. All right. So I've got this little uh, tag stamp. Throw that on a block here and we'll stamp that on the whites. I'm seeing three people voted for solids. Let's scroll back here real quick. It looks like solid is the winner. In my quick little peek I got there. So yeah, I think the stripes might be too busy. Good call guys. All right, so I am just stamping the tag right there. Oh, that is really bad stamping, Susan. 
I'm stamping the tag right here. Oh, that's better. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab a greeting out of here. Let's see. How about it's time for tea? Let's put that on our tag. I think that will fit. Let's find out. And then you could add some tea bags in the, the envelope if you wanted. That would be super cute. Ooh. Don't look too close. This block is not very clean. All right, it's time for tea. Let's just pop that right in here. Again, I'm just using Sweet Sorbet for everything because uh, that is a major color in our card. And then it will all color coordinate, right? Now, if I had just die cut the tag, because my cup is white, I was worried it wouldn't show up very much. So that tag stamp is really helpful to keep it from, um, from that happening. So let's go ahead and cut this at two and three, uh, two and a half by two and a half. All right, here. And two and a half. All right, and then our cup is going to go on there and we'll add in that little tag as soon as we die cut it. So I'm just going to pop this on the inside of my card. Let's see. Oh, I didn't even lose my adhesive. It's a miracle. Oh, look, the other side is so cute. So cute with the envelopes. Uh, definitely need to put that on my envelope flap for this card. We'll have to show that in a future video on how to do the flap on your card all right so that's going to go right in there i am going to just stick it flat i'm normally a big fan of dimensionals but i don't want my card to be lumpy on the inside right so i've got my little cup right there and then i can go ahead and die cut out this <laughs> i just have to shove some stuff over to make room right all right let's grab our mini for this job because I got, I got my dirty stamp and now my piece that I had here is stuck to it. Oh my goodness, Susan, seriously, seriously. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and get this die cut. So I've got my little mini machine here. I've got the number one, I've got the number two and another number two. And I've got my little tag here. Definitely gonna want a post-it note for this job. Um, I'm also going to need to find the dies, which I've momentarily missed. Up, oh, found them. <laughs> they were hiding under the stamp set. This is welcome to my world. There's even a tinier tag that is just adorable. We're going to use the bigger one because we have the, we did the stamping on here. So I'm going to take a sip here since I lost the dies. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just line this up. And I'm going to stick a post-it note on that so that it doesn't move on me. And we'll get our super cute card. Let's see. All right, here we go. You're a Bengal Spice Girl. Two of our, two of our viewers are Bengal Spice Girls. Fun, the Spice Girls. <laughs> I love tea. I've been craving tea all day like a, well, I had some this morning, but uh, a decaf for this evening would be really nice. A good, like, um, I love the Lady Grey decaf. It's really good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and die cut this little tag right here. Crunchy crunch. All right. I like those sound effects. Crunchy crunch. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of sound effects, when I wa was walking the dogs today, um, there was a lot of snow and ice chunks falling from the trees because of all this ice we had before the snow hit. And it was just really, <laughs> the dogs kept junk jumping because there would be all this unexpected noise. All right. So there we have our little tag. But gosh, you guys, we need some white for that. Um, Jennifer, do you know, are, is the Baker's Twine and White? I think that's carrying over, isn't it? Um, I'm just curious whether it is or not. All right, let's grab the Baker's Twine here. 
So this is the Baker's Twine uh, assorted pack. I'm going to pull out the white because, you know, God, I have a, a white string, right? It's not really... Uh, ah, found my scissors. They were under a whole bunch of stuff, but I found them. Take a sip, everyone. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. All right, so I'm going to just pop up my teacup here a little bit. Stick my Baker's Twine behind it. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to have a glue dot on that just to make sure it's not going to come out. And then I'm going to glue dot my little tag right to that and trim it down. So let's see. Glue dots are right where they belong. Who even am I? <laughs> and I'll grab my take your pick tool here and we're going to pop off some glue dots. And I'm gonna, first I'm going to glue dot this down. So I'm going to put a glue dot on my teacup and smush my twine on top of it. And then I'm going to add some more glue dots on the back of my tag. Now glue dots will add a, just a teeny bit of dimension to what you're sticking down. So they're a good choice for the inside of the card because they kind of give you a little bit of dimension without making your card like weirdly bulky. So there is our little, or should our tag go this way? Maybe this way. All right, and then I'm just going to trim off that excess string that I don't need. Tuck that back behind and pop this down right here. So there we've got the inside of our card. And this can pop down like that. Now you could put a strip of designer paper in here as well. You know, there's more decorating opportunities. I don't want to make it too busy, but you could do uh, maybe a one inch strip across the top if you wanted to have just a little pop of color. I would maybe do this or maybe this. Let's try this one, okay? Can't stop, I'm just creating. <laughs> Oh goodness. Walk away from the card, Susan. Okay, one more little little final touch. And then we'll be done. Alright. So take this and ooh, I don't know what this dimension is. I believe it's five and a half. So let's try it and see. So this is five and a half by an inch. Probably check the dimension before I tell you what it is. Um, it's going to be a, well, yeah, no, I think that will work. It's going to be a teensy bit too long because of the weirdness of the fold. So um, I'm going to just shave off a tiny bit. Uh, it would be a sixteenth of an inch I'm cutting off. We also would call that a skosh, right? All right. Oh my gosh, you guys. Does anyone see the, the seal? Oh, here it is again. Found it. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Mm. Let's take another little sip here. So, your daughter went as a tea bag. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. What a great Halloween costume. I love it. All right, so let's just pop this in here. It just makes the inside, it was a lot of white, I thought, and this makes it just a little bit bright and cheery and happy, right? But it's tucked up, so it's not going to show from the outside. So there we have our card. What do you think? Is this a fun fold would you tr that you would try? Did I scare you <laughs> with how to make it with the, the scoring? It's... It's simpler than I made it sound. Let's put it that way. And let's see if it will stand up because um, it seemed to want to before. Yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm floored by that, actually. I did not think that this card would stand, but it appears that it will do that just fine. And the Baker's Twine is running in luck. Go, go over there and have a time out, you. All right, so we've got our card all set. Um, I, you're going to try it tomorrow. Oh, yay. <laughs> All right, isn't this paper fun? It's just, it's so happy. So, so happy. So quick reminder, um, I'm going to do a little bit of talking while I go grab, I'm going to grab the dimensions um, and try and pop them up here. 
Huh. Um. All right, let's see if this works, guys. <gasps> let's see if this works. Such a cute set of dies. Now, let's talk about those dies really quick. Um, they are retiring. The stamp set is retiring. Um, the paper is retiring. So the paper is on sale. The dies are going to be 50% off starting on Tuesday. So what a great time. You do not want to order the bundle on this one. If you want the stamps, order them separately. The stamps are not on sale, but the dies are uh, on deeply discounted at 50% off. So it's a great time to pick this up and add it to your collection. And let's see if we can go to create a banner. All right, it just fit. It only allows me to do 200 characters. So I'm gonna see if, all right. So this is the corner open fun fold card. Card base is seven by eight and a quarter and it's scored at two and three quarters from the top, two and three quarters from the side. And then the diagonal, you make a mark at five and a half on the top, five and a half on the side and you score diagonally. So if you want to take a screenshot of those dimensions, I'll also open the card so you can take another screenshot of what it looks like open so that you can just, after this video, you can just go and make one of these. You can make 10 of these, right? And then just a quick reminder, the project sheet that will go out this week is going to feature the uh, bridge fold card, uh, which is super easy. These are all done with the elegant borders dies. Uh, but lots of possibilities with these. Let me just make that go away. There we go. So if you haven't subscribed to the project sheet emails, I'm just hitting buttons right and left now. Not the right buttons, but they're right there. Uh, you can go to suestampfield.com, click on subscribe and sign up for the project sheets. Again, if you are not receiving the project sheets and you have subscribed, you can shoot me an email, susan at suestampfield.com and we'll see if we can get you sorted out. And I am going to switch cameras. Thanks for helping me make our card, you guys. I, uh, I love it. I think my sister will enjoy this and hopefully it will help her heal even faster from her surgery adventure today. So I'm going to flip the camera just so I can say goodbye. Oh, no, I'm not. Hang on. So sorry. There we go. Technology. There we go. That finally worked. Thank you, Jennifer, for helping out tonight and uh, sharing the uh, details in the comments. Thanks for being here, everyone. We'll see you on Tuesday at 730 Central Time for another uh, stamping adventure. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. I'm going to go have some decaf tea and some supper. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>